Welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 6 Video 3 on Probabilistic Damage Stability. Now looking at input parameters for zones of damage and permeabilities. Before we can run the analysis we need to define the subdivision of our vessel and that subdivision is longitudinal, transverse and vertical. The zones define the longitudinal subdivision. Here we've got our zone 1 location at the stern as part of the global input and so we need to define the locations of a number of zones along the vessel. So over in Hydromax in our input table we go to the zones tab and it's simply a matter of typing in the aft and the forward extents of each zone. As we click in each row of this table you can see highlighted above the zone that's been defined. You cannot have gaps between zones, so all you really need to do is go down this uh, column and type the forward and aft locations and the other values will be matched automatically for you. So that's the first part of our definition, which is our zones. The second part is our longitudinal bulkheads for our transverse subdivision. Uh, the longitudinal zones result in our probability p factors being calculated. In the transverse direction, the probabilities are called r factors. So we set up that in a similar way. We go to the next tab, which is the longitudinal bulkhead tab. And if I switch to a plan view, we can see the locations of these bulkheads. And uh, at each zone, we can then define how many transverse bulkheads, uh, sorry, longitudinal bulkheads that provide transverse subdivision we have. So right at the aft end here, there are no longitudinal bulkheads. Then moving forward, once we get to zone three, we have uh, one longitudinal bulkhead there. And so we can define the location of that bulkhead by entering the offset for this parameter B1. And we can repeat that for the remaining zones. So what we have here is some wing tanks adjacent to the hold. And so that provides our transverse subdivision. Notice that this section is for one adjacent zone of damage. Uh, if we scroll down our table further, we'll see that there's a section for two adjacent zones of damage. And uh, if uh, the damage extends over two zones, we need to define the uh, subdivision using the subdivision that we find within either of those two zones. So we need to set up both of those parts of the table. The final piece of the setup for the the zonal subdivision is in the vertical direction, so we need to define where our watertight boundaries are vertically, so decks, and the probability factor is called a V factor in this case, which is the probability of that vertical zone being damaged. As you might expect, we go to the next tab, which is our decks tab, and in profile view, we can see the location of these decks. So again, we define how many decks there are within the zone, and then we define the height of each of those decks. So we can see some uh, subdivision underneath the engine room here, for example. And as we move along, we can see the double bottom underneath each hold. So we should enter in the location of those decks. Again, we should do it both for a single zone of damage and uh, define where the decks are for adjacent zones of damage. Once we've entered in those values, for the longitudinal subdivision, our probability factors, our p factors, will be automatically computed, and we can review them in this table to see our probabilities. The r factors, the, the probability of transverse damage, will be computed here, and you can see we get uh, one or two r factors depending on how much transverse subdivision there is. And then finally, our V factors for the vertical subdivision. You'll notice that a lot of these will be one if there's no vertical limit. Final uh, piece of setup is to define the actual effects of our zone damage. So let's go back to our presentation. We have a command called the extent of damage command. And what that does is it walks through our subdivision of our vessel it damages each zone in turn, and it looks at the effect of that damage on the compartments and tanks that intersect with that zone. So by using this command, we can automatically create a series of damage cases that automatically turn on damage for the tanks and compartments within the zone. Once you've run that command, it is possible to manually override it if you wish. So back in Hydromax in the zone tab here, we can uh, go to our case menu and we can use the extent of damage command. It automatically creates a series of damage cases. It creates 16 of them in this case 
and you can see from the checkboxes it automatically turns on which uh, tanks and compartments are damaged within these zones. If I turn on that we'll be able to see that more clearly if uh, that damage occurs we'll be able to see uh, which tanks and compartments are affected as we walk our way down the vessel. The final piece of the input for probabilistic damage stability is our permeabilities. Uh, the code requires that we consider different permeabilities for our tanks and compartments for each of the three different drafts or in our case three different load cases. So that's the final table uh, in this window, the permeabilities table where for each tank in the list we can see the permeabilities at the deepest, the partial and the light service draft. So that completes our setup of our input parameters for subdivisions and damage and permeability and we're now ready to run our analysis. Thank you for watching.